Well, hello there, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm Robert Durden, and we have to go over the uh, painful news, unfortunately. I was alerted to this by JB last night. Nina Turner has joined the Young Turks Network as a correspondent, which means she's being paid by the network. She won't be a mainstay, but she'll be on there pretty regularly. Okay. So I want to talk about a couple of things here. And my reaction originally was pure rage, but then I sat and thought about it all night, and I actually, I think I can convince you guys that this is actually not the worst thing in the world, and in fact, it was probably going to happen anyway. And I will make the argument that this is kind of the Nina experiment I wanted to run with her congressional run. I was hoping that she would be nominated, go and win go to Congress and become part of the squad because I thought that she would probably go in there and sell out just like the squad would and then we would have our answer as to whether or not democratic reformation is the way to go because if the best justice democrat which I think we can all agree a couple years back if we were to pick the the person most likely to go in there and crack some heads for the left it wouldn't have been AOC it wouldn't have been you know, any of the other squad members that are in there currently, most of us would have been like, yeah, Nina Turner is probably the person I would trust most to go in there and buck the establishment. So I wanted to run the experiment and see if I was right or not as to whether or not she would sell out. And I think I can convince you that this is basically that same experiment. And now we have our answer, which is Democratic Reformation is a lost cause. Because if they can co-opt Nina Turner, if the establishment can buy her out, which I'm going to make the argument that she did go to TYT for money because it doesn't make any sense to do anything else. Uh, she doesn't need the notoriety. She's more popular than TYT and more people know her nationally than TYT. So it doesn't make sense for like a platforming purpose. She could start her own YouTube channel and it would be as popular as TYT overnight. So it doesn't make any sense. I think she went for money. I will make that argument as well. So now we've run the Nina experiment. And we have our answer. So, and then I will also talk about where do we go from here. And I'll also talk about my evolution and more importantly, a lot of the people who I thought were my idols at the beginning of Political Fight Club six months or, you know, nine months ago, like Nina Turner and Kyle Kalinske, their de evolution. We're going to talk about do I think I've moved more left? Or is it that a lot of the people that I idolized about a year ago have just made a drastic turn to the right? And we'll analyze that as well. So let's start off here, guys. Um, Nina Turner is now going to be on TYT. I think there's only a couple of reasons that she would have gone. Let's think about this from Nina's perspective. She would either go for notoriety, which I don't think that's that doesn't make any sense because, like I said, she could start up her own YouTube channel or a podcast and be more popular than TYT by herself. So I don't know why she would go. It's not notoriety. Um, she could go to do the right thing, which I'll tell you what that is in a second. She actually goes in there and kind of infiltrates TYT and savages Jenk on his own show live. Um, or she goes for money. And I think it's that. That's the main reason, I think, that she went over there, if not the only reason. So I'm going to reserve judgment on Nina instead of going off on her in this segment because there is still a small chance that she, like, does a Severus Snape where she, like, infiltrates TYT and her intention is to go on there and do kind of like what Kim Iverson does on the Hill nowadays, which is go on there and kind of, like, show up some of the actual people, like Ryan Grimm, she did that in valiant fashion the other day. If her intention is to go on there and to really, really push back on the Stooges at TYT and almost, like, crush them on their own show, that would be okay. You know, I, I still don't like the idea because you can go do that on other shows that are actually lefty that share your values. So I don't know. I, I think that's a very low chance of happening. But if she goes out there on the first day and calls Jank a misogynist and a union buster and a bestiality fiend and uh, somebody who was like, you know, absolutely awful on foreign policy then I'll be like, okay, well, she went on there to basically smoke the people that are on TYT and co-opt it or take it over because she'll be the most popular person on TYT and they'll never be able to fire her. Um, 
But no, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think she went because of money. I don't think Jeffrey Katzenberg is going to sign somebody to a contract on TYT unless there's a very, very strict agreement on what she can and cannot talk about and say on the show. There's no way that Nina's going to be able to go on there and be a firebrand against people like Anna and Jenk. So that's, that's, it's money. She went because she got a big fat contract. And if she got a big fat contract, it means she's going to be on a leash. That's just the way that it is. So I want to talk briefly about why I think TYT did this. I think this is a play that they saw actually work at The Hill. I was going to do a separate episode on this, but I'm going to weave it in. I don't know if you guys saw, The Hill has actually rebounded. Not to where they were before. Some of my first episodes were talking about how Kyle Kalinske laying waste to The Hill dropped them from about 1.45 million subs to about 1.22. They lost, they lost almost a quarter of a million subs after Crystal and Sager left and Kyle Kalinske wiped them out. But... Lately, their numbers have been going up. They went from 1.22, I think they're up to 1.28 now. So they've gone up over 50,000 subs over the past couple of weeks. And this has kind of weirdly coincided with them bringing someone named Kim Iverson on, who I've watched briefly recently. She seems very smart. And every video that she makes on the Hill, like the one I'm talking about where she destroyed Ryan Grimm in a, uh, when they were talking about COVID, and vaccinated versus unvaccinated people being able to spread the virus. She caught Ryan Grimm with his pants down and destroyed him. I sent that link to Jimmy Dore. I hope he covers it. But Kim Iverson, if you don't know anything about her, she's like Crystal Ball's twin, almost. Like, rhetorically, they're very similar. They're both, you know, decent-looking ladies, which is, that's what they look for on the, the Hill anyway, is they want to give you eye candy. Um, but also, she's very sharp in her rhetoric, very sharp. So it's almost like they finally went out and found their own crystal ball. And since then, the numbers have gone up because a lot of her videos have gone super viral. In fact, she had one that had hundreds of thousands of views. And that's not like, the highest they ever get on Rising now is like 30, 40,000, a lot of them under 10,000. Like Emily Jashinsky's like a 10,000 per uh, Rising segment, or uh, what do they call them, radar segments. Um, but Kim Iverson, every time she goes on there, gets a lot of views. I think TYT saw this, and they understood what they had to do. They had to go out there and get somebody that had name recognition that was going to come on that was leftier or perceived by the populace as leftier than TYT themselves and attempt to, you know, stir up some real views. So I think they, they probably named a few people in their heads. You know, they, they thought of a few people they might be able to bring on. But the obvious choice in that play is like, let's go throw money at Nina Turner, who just lost her congressional campaign, and see if she'll come take a job here. And they're, so they're running the Hill, the Kim Iverson play that the Hill ran, in attempt to bring in viewers. And it, it probably will work. It's, it's going to definitely boost TYT, in my opinion. Um, it's brilliant for them, which is why it's absolutely so savage for the rest of us. And, uh, I don't know, like I said, guys, I was super enraged when it first happened, but the more I've thought about it, the more I think that this is not a bad thing. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. We have actually run the Nina experiment. I think now we know that democratic reformation is not going to be possible via moving toward the center or a democratic reformation is not going to be uh, possible via actually going through the party. You know, we're not going to actually change the party. We're not going to change the people like TYT back to us. They change us to them. We know that now. Nina was the best of us. The Justice Democrat experiment has failed. So what that tells me is that no more donating to Justice Democrats, no more running through the Democratic Party, because everybody can be co-opted by money. Everybody can be co-opted by the Democratic Party apparatus. If AOC wearing that shitty dress at that gala earlier this week and Nina Turner joining TYT isn't enough evidence for you, then your name might be David Dole and you're just in love with the squad or your, your entire career is based off of promoting the squad like the Humanist Report, like Kyle Kalinske, like David Dole, 
like TYT, and that's the reason that you are still supporting them. So this is a huge win for TYT, but I don't think there is reason to melt down. Like the Vanguard melted down. And they had a good video, it's not a bad video, but they're like, what do we do now? We were riding on Nina Turner being like, maybe the person would run in 2024. That's the type of ideas that I had when I first started this show, but I've evolved. I wish the Vanguard could do the same, because they still have their hat supremely hung on the Democratic Reformation train, and it's leaving them behind and they don't know what to do. So, come over here, guys. Understand now that it is folly to run people through the Democratic Party, and honestly, it, it seems more and more likely that we're never going to even get this done through electoral politics at all. Because third party, that, that's going to take decades. And I want to run that experiment as well and build up something like the Green Party, a coalition of third parties maybe joining to challenge the way that uh, Ralph Nader did. And the, that play, guys, is not to win. <laughs> that play is not to win. Remember, the first play has to be getting them on the ballots, which is just getting the 5% that you need in five national polls, get them on the debates. You have to break the 15% total in the votes to actually be able to have a perceived threat. Once you have that perceived threat, which is what Nader was aiming for, you use that, that block that is not going to vote for the Democratic Party as a negotiating tool to drag the Democratic Party left. That is the only way that you're going to do that. I, I don't see a day coming in our lifetimes, my lifetime, where a third party will actually have a chance at winning. The idea has to be Nader's idea, bringing 10 to 15, 20 million people into a block that say, hey, Democratic Party, we will never vote for you unless you give us A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then the Democratic Party would be forced to incorporate certain things that we want, otherwise we wouldn't vote for them. That's how the CIO, the Congressional Cong uh, Congress of Industrial Organizations, pulled FDR to do the New Deal. That's what we have to do, and honestly, I don't know if we're going to be able to even do that. So it might be completely out of electoral politics, which means it all has to be in the streets protests. It has to be developing communes across the country to help uh, fight homelessness, and um, introducing socialism on the streets and in local governments. So um, I'm choosing to see this as we ran the Nina experiment and it turned out exactly how I thought and I didn't even have to run the Nina experiment because I was a little let down that she didn't win her con congressional run or uh, her seat in Ohio's 11th district. Chantel Brown whooped her and this is evidence that you can't avoid being bought by the Democratic Party. They will co-opt you. As Shama Sawant so eloquently said, if you're a progressive, the road through the Democratic Party leads to a graveyard, or in this case, more than likely, it leads to your bank account being padded and all your ideas going to a graveyard, all your principles going to a graveyard. And I imagine we'll see Kyle Kalinske join TUIT soon. I used to joke. You guys remember this stuff? I, I, I've made multiple episodes where I joke about like TUIT having like Vosh and Kyle Kalinske and Tim Black on their show. I, I thought I was just being satirical, and those were funny episodes. I think you guys liked them quite a bit. But now Nina Turner joins TYT. That's more satirical than anything I've ever joked about. So let's, that brings me to my last point. Do I think that I have moved more left? Or do I think that a lot of the people that I ranked very highly in my power rankings about nine months ago have moved very much more corporatist and therefore more right? It's definitely that second thing. I have not, I think I've been influenced a little bit more lefty by um, a lot of people who I now follow who I didn't used to, like the Fred Hampton leftists, Savvy Sabs, Jackson Hinkle. Um, and, and nowadays I listen to Jimmy Dore much more than I used to. Um, and I think I've been moved farther left a little bit, but I think the major component is this in this, guys, is not me moving left. It's these people that I used to idolize at the time Biden got into office around New Year's have just moved so supremely right and have become more sold out in their rhetoric and also in their actions since the turn of the year. So I, Nina going to TYT, Jesus. 
Kalinsky can't stop talking about Trump and people on Fox News, which he used to do a little bit of, but he doesn't um, concern himself with the squad at all anymore. He made like two or three episodes when they flubbed, uh, forced the vote. He's like, yeah, they're just cowardly and they suck. But beyond that, he's, he's never come out and called them corrupt. He hasn't said anything about that staged event for the or the protest to extend the eviction moratorium on the steps of Congress. He doesn't critique the squad at all. And, uh, I mean, don't even get me started about David Dole and Mike Figueredo. I used to listen to them about a year ago, and I can't stand it anymore. They're all the fucking same. All these people do is demonize Republicans all day long. Go look at their walls, man. Everything's about Trump or Republicans. Like, they don't have any fucking power. You guys don't critique the people in power. You're not challenging power. You want to know why? Because you're okay with the power st structure the way that it is. Because now you ran into some money, so you're okay with the status quo. So I imagine it's only a matter of time before like, a lot of these uh, people be co-opted by TYT. I think that Kalinske may actually get a job there. Vosh may actually get a job there. And again, I was just joking about this shit. I was just joking about it. But again... That's the, that's the, uh, if you're decent at satire, a lot of times you find yourself making these jokes and predictions and finding them, like, turn out to be true. That's why the Simpsons always seem to be right about things that happened, like, 10, 15 years later is because their satire was very good back in the day. They predicted Trump would be president, and I think they predicted that Trump would be president in 2020, um, the, um amongst numerous other things. So when I said, you know, <laughs> TYT is eventually going to be made up of, like, Jenk, Vosh, Sam Cedar, Anna the Weather Girl, Ryan Grimm and Emma Viglin doing sports, and then Kyle Kalinske doing some show on there. I was just joking, but that looks like it actually might be the way of the future. So that's why I'm a satirist. So um, in summation, guys, I don't want you to lose heart here. This tells us exactly what we need to know, and now we have a plan of attack. The plan of attack must be attack these people, which I do regularly, and all the people I just mentioned regularly go after these people, make sure that if they don't go in, like if Nina goes on TYT and she doesn't savage Jank and Anna immediately when they start talking nonsense, then we must savage Nina Turner. And you you guys know, I'm, I'm able to evolve. I loved Nina Turner nine months ago, but I have zero qualms equalizing her if she goes on to TYT and starts spouting the same rhetoric that they do. I also will give her massive credit if she goes on there and calls them out for bullshit. That's the thing that separates me from someone like David Dole and Mike Figueredo and Kyle Kalinske, who literally, it's like there's a part of their brain that they can't unlock that will allow them to actually go after the squad in a substantive and repetitive way, which they deserve. And that's the difference between the far left media and what I'm calling, you know, the, you know, faux aggressives, the neoliberal shit zipper media, is that at least we can change our opinions based on what happens. These people are just running with a narrative and it's confirmation bias. Squad good, work your way backwards from that bias for everything. Also, Trump and Republicans bad, work your way backwards like from that confirmation with everything. So at least you know, when you listen to me talk about this stuff, that you can at least trust that I'm telling you the truth because I used to praise Nina Turner and Kyle Kalinske, and now nobody makes fun of Kyle Kalinske more than I do. And Nina, I gotta tell you, don't put me, or don't put yourself in my crosshairs, please. Just go on TYT and destroy them. Infiltrate and destroy Jank and Anna, call them out at every turn for everything. Everything. Not only will that make you wildly popular, but you'll also kind of euthanize TYT's current brand. But she's not going to do that. If she were going to do that, she would have run a campaign that was much more militant against Chantel Brown. But she cozied up to the establishment, and I imagine her TYT correspondence now will just be her further cozying up to the establishment and she did it more than likely because of money um but prove me wrong nina go on there and just destroy everybody in sight and i'll eat my words and i will go right back to praising you but if you go on there and you co-opt the rhetoric that tyt did nobody will destroy you harder than me that's a promise so um i'm not as enraged as i thought i might be about this 
But we'll see exactly how badly Nina goes on there and performs. Um, I'll reserve judgment. Keep fighting the good fight out there, guys. I'll talk to you later.